Welcome to the Picky Girl Travels Podcast, the show for black women who want more out of life and to live it as they see fit. The message here is all about defying convention, embracing adventure, and regretting absolutely nothing. I'm your host, Adelia Borchade of PickyGirlTravelsTheWorld.com. As some of you know, last month in March uh, was my birthday, and as one does, when your birthday come around, comes around, I did a little reflecting about what the last year has been like, um, what it's been like for me as I started to live what I often refer to as my new life, um, because I divide my life up into two parts. There was the part, the old part before I turned 40, and then the new part, my new life, and that's after I had turned 40. And the last seven years have, I really don't even have a word for what the last seven years have been like. They have really been beyond anything I could have imagined. But I, I think about like how, how different of a person I am now versus I was 10 years ago. And one of the things that has really changed for me is I have kind of, I've started from scratch. I've reset. I am, I have been, I, I'm rethinking many of the things I had simply just accepted previously in my old life. Like this is just the way it is. This is how life works. I'll give you an example of one of those things. In U.S. culture, we are subtly and sometimes not so subtly told that we are not enough as we are this is not enough we are not good enough um, we should always be striving and desiring to be more and to have more that <laughs> i've mentioned to y'all before that that expectation of wanting to strive that expectation that we all want more was something i had struggled with in my old life because that that really didn't line up with who i was on the inside um a while back i came across an article called what if all i want is a mediocre life a woman named krista o'reilly davi Digui, not sure I pronounced that correctly, um, wrote this post. I'm going to put a link to it in the description because I think you should read it as well. So needless to say, me in my old life, somebody who had struggled with the disconnect between how I felt about how life should be lived and what society was telling me about how life should be lived, this title really spoke to me. I knew based off of what, how I had been conditioned, how I had been raised, all of the messages I was getting in the media that I was supposed to find hustle culture exciting. It was supposed to feed me. I was supposed to be driven. I was supposed to be competitive. But honestly, I never was. I just wanted to be happy and content. I wasn't clear on what exactly that looked like, but in the back of my mind, I knew that's what I wanted. And I also knew that trying to hustle, trying to strive for these things and these positions that I thought I was supposed to want, it was not bringing me contentment. But if we're honest, those of us who were raised in the US, um, if we're honest about the system we were raised in, contentment is not one of our priorities. That's not something we're taught to seek is contentment. Because I didn't fit the mold or I didn't enjoy the things I thought I was supposed to enjoy, I really very much felt like a failure for a lot of that first part of my life because I wasn't out there doing big things and you know leaving my mark on the world and all of that jazz. And I guess now that I think about it, according to, you know, our culture in the States, I was a failure. Uh, I was just mediocre, okay? And if you think about that, that is how we are taught to view our comfort zone. Staying in your comfort zone is to be okay with your own mediocrity. And who would want to be mediocre? 
right? Think about all some of the some of the popular sayings that we have about our comfort zone. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. That you're not really living if you're staying in that place where you're comfortable. You have to go out of that and I guess become uncomfortable in order to be really living your life. There's another one. Um, great things never come from comfort zones. So if you stay in this area that feels good and feels comfortable, you'll never be great. At face value, you know, if we just take it at face value, maybe these sayings were meant to be encouraging, you know, like trying to get us to broaden our horizons. But over time, in particular over the last seven years, I have come to view those kinds of sayings very differently. We've been told over and over that staying in our comfort zone is bad. You can't grow there. You will make no progress in life because you're playing it safe and playing it safe is bad. Have you ever heard somebody say, um, don't get too comfortable. Uh, there's always room for improvement. Like think about how we talk about the comfort zone. I think the comfort zone gets a bad rap. What I want to know is why is comfort a bad thing? Why is it a bad thing that I feel comfortable? <laughs> that seems crazy to me now, but in that first part of my life, y'all, um, I accepted this kind of thinking without hesitation. So I mentioned to y'all that post that, uh, that post called, what if all I want is a mediocre life? And the title grabbed me. Then I read it and this might have been the first time somebody was putting words to all of those things that I was feeling. And it actually went a long way to helping me like divest myself from the guilt that I usually felt about like not loving hustle culture and not being super competitive. Because y'all, I mean, if you really, really think about US American culture, you know, it's all about competition and winning and being the winner, winner and beating other people. And I just wasn't about that life. So I was always feeling bad about who I was until I read this. <laughs> It really has taken me nearly a decade to be okay with who I am and how I feel about how I want to live life. Um, I don't know if that's how long it's supposed to take. I don't know. But I definitely am happy that I was finally able to get to this point. Now, in her post, she addresses several of the, the things that we're told by society about how we're supposed to live that really and truly we kind of all know is some bullshit, but we often aren't, I don't want to say we aren't brave enough. We just don't feel secure enough to call society on that bullshit. Like um, that there is value, there is inherent value in having peace, in having calm and being content. That runs very counter to what our society teaches us. Um, she talks about, you don't have, okay, she doesn't use the term black excellence, but that's how I'm interpreting it because she's not a black woman. But one of the things that I took away from it is, if you don't meet the qualifications of being black excellence, and anybody who is black watching this, listening to this, y'all know what I'm talking about. Like your life still matters, even though you didn't become the doctor, the lawyer, you know, have one of those acceptable professions and achieve the acceptable material things in life. Your life does still matter, even if you haven't done that. Because society tells us different. Your hobbies don't have to make you money. Um, as many of you know, I sew most of my clothes. And so inevitably when somebody finds that out, their response is, ooh, you could make so much money doing X, Y, Z. Can I not just enjoy making things without trying to make a profit? That doesn't really compute in the American mindset. 
So, you know, you can make art for the sake of art just because you want to make it. You don't have to look to monetize everything. Everything you do doesn't have to be part of this greater plan of hustle. Um, she talks about like keeping house and like your house doesn't have to look like one of those things you find on Pinterest. Um, you know, it's okay if you don't dust every day. And ultimately the message is you can define what success looks like for you. And it's okay if it's not what other people approve of. And I know none of these things sound very earth shattering, but sometimes we just need to hear it be said to us in a different way or by a different person for things to finally start to click. Instead of being a place of mediocrity, I think comfort zones are those areas where we're actually our best because we are most confident, because we're comfortable. Maybe we should focus on bringing more things into our comfort zone instead of always trying to leave it and being so pressed about getting out of our comfort zones. Maybe our efforts would be better spent working on finding ways to enhance our comfort zones instead of making ourselves miserable to achieve more and more of something. Um, you know, like who wants that? Who wants that discomfort? Who wants who wants to make themselves unhappy in that way? Go read Krista's post and let me know what you think. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment there, or you can leave me a voicemail. You don't feel like typing. If you'll look in the episode description, you'll find a link where you can do that, or you can send me a DM on social media. As always, thank you for the continued support. If you have not done so already, please subscribe on YouTube. Uh, if the podcatcher you're listening on allows you to subscribe, do that there. Um, if you wanna show your support financially, there are links in the description for how you can do that. And until next time.